So let's look at the links in a basic recording and playback chain with minimal processing where you just want to record a sound and play it back. You've got the acoustics in your recording room, microphone choice and position, microphone preamp, the analog to digital converter, the delivery format, in other words, which digital format you're using, the digital to analog converter, the monitoring system that you're listening to it on, and the acoustics in the playback room. Each of these factors is like its own pane of glass, some of which are more transparent than others. And I'd like to take this opportunity to shatter some myths about how you can improve your sound. And to help illustrate these points, we're going to use the analogy of the panes of glass as well as a chain analogy. So in our stack of panes of relatively clear glass, any that are tinted or dirty, they're going to alter the final image you see through them quite a bit. The ones that are clean and transparent, those don't alter the image, at least not as much, not relatively speaking. Now, if you have a stack of panes of glass, some of which are tinted, others of which have dirt on them, and some of which are very clean and transparent, which ones do you need to improve to get a better look at your final image? Well, obviously, your clarity of the final thing you see through all those panes of glass is limited by whatever is the dirtiest. Just like in a chain, as they say, a chain is only as strong as its weakest link. It makes no sense to strengthen links in the chain that are already strong. If you want the whole chain to be better, you have to strengthen the weakest links. So with that in mind, let's look at the links in a typical basic recording and playback chain as you would find in most people's hobby studios, like at home. So the link and the strength in a typical hobby or home studio. Pro studios are something else entirely. They have the money to spend on everything being good. But for most of us, as we're doing our own recordings at home, this is what you'll usually find in a typical studio. The acoustics in most people's recording rooms at home, very weak. They contribute a lot of negative factors to the sound. Microphone choice and position. Many of us, when we're just getting started, we don't know how to place a microphone just right to get the best sound, so that's one part that's weak. And another is, if the room already has bad acoustics, it's hard to find a good spot. And another is, good microphones are expensive. Next is the microphone preamp. Again, most people just getting started in a home studio are probably using the built-in preamps in their audio interface, which is okay. They are not as transparent as some really nice $1,000 ones, which will get you extremely clean sound right from the microphone. Some microphone preamplifiers will color the sound in a way that people like, but we're leaving that out of the analogy for now. We're just thinking about transparency. Then we've got analog to digital converters, and in the last five, six, seven years at the time of this recording, they've been very good. Even a cheap analog to digital converter will still be relatively pretty transparent when compared to the factors of the microphone or the acoustics in the recording room. So again, this is relative strength. Next, we've got digital audio itself. And as long as you're at 44.1 16-bit for your playback format, it is better to record at 24-bit. Uh, but as long as you're at least at 44.1 16-bit, that's probably going to be the strongest link in a typical home or hobby studio chain. It's probably going to be the most transparent thing among all these factors. Then, of course, you've got your digital to analog converters, which are usually pretty good. Then you've got your monitor speakers, which, depending on how much you spend and the way they work in your room, they're usually okay. And then many people, the acoustics in their playback room, are not well suited for hearing things clearly. So looking back over this chart, chances are if you are at the home studio or hobbyist level and you're interested in making your recordings better, you don't even have to worry yet about your digital converters or what format you record in. In fact, relatively speaking to these other factors, the recording part may as well not even be there. You may as well be connecting a wire right from your microphone preamp to your monitor speakers. That's how transparent digital recording is without processing compared to these other factors. And that's why I strongly believe that it's premature to worry about digital resolution as a hobbyist recordist until you get all that other stuff straightened out. For playback as a final delivery format, CD quality really is good enough for nearly every situation. I can imagine maybe wearing in-ear monitors in a nearly silent room listening to 
classical music that has an extremely wide dynamic range, you might begin to hear some of the dither noise that wouldn't be there if it were 24-bit. But for the vast majority of playback situations, CD quality is enough. If you're recording for video, you may want to use 48 kilohertz because that's the common format for video. Now, notice I said playback because you do want to use 24 bits for recording and for processing. Eventually, I'd like to make another video that shows why that is and talk about some of the intricacies of it, like rounding errors. It's common practice in even high-end pro studios to simply record at 24-bit, 44.1, or 48 kilohertz. The super high-resolution audio fad is really driven more by marketers and by the usual human sociology of trying to keep up with the Joneses more than anything. In fact, there are reasons why extremely high sample rates actually degrade the sound. Of course, then there's other situations, like with software synthesis, where higher sample rates can help, but that's only if they're not programmed very well, and sometimes it doesn't help either. Now, often in a high-end pro studio, they will record to tape and then dub that to digital. The reason they do that is tape, it's not transparent, but it has a color to it that is often desirable, especially for pop and rock music. Next time, we'll talk a little bit about software and effects and things like that. Thanks for watching.